Hello, everyone. Thanks for um, coming to this session. So I'm going to present uh, the work done with Marcus Matias, Rado Timofte, and Professor Luke Van Hall at the University of Leuven. Um, so why would we want to do 100 frames per second? Uh, why so fast? So the main motivation is a robotics application where the detection of pedestrian is actually one small model in a much larger system where we need to do much more computations. Uh, also, in an embedded system, we have lower computational power available. So if it runs at 100 frames in a desktop, we could have it at good frame rate on a mobile robot. And finally, in robotic applications, we don't really want to reach frame rate. What we want is a robot to react to its environment as fast as possible. Thus, what we want to minimize is the total latency. So in this case, faster is always better. Um, so how can, we how can we make things faster? At least in my case, I only know three different ways of making things run faster. The first one is we just wait. We wait longer, hard work gets faster, so maybe we should focus only on quality. The second way is to take an existing algorithm and re-implement it, exploiting the modern hardware. In current days, this is making it more parallel. And the third way is actually to redesign the algorithm itself so we make an algorithmic change to be by design faster. So this is what we're this is what we're focusing on on this paper. How can we make things algorithmically faster? So if we look at um, previous work on pedestrian detection, we have seen, we see um, important progress, both in quality and a fair amount of research on different ways of improving speed. In this paper, we are further pushing the quality and also improving on speed. Uh, in particular, we have two contributions, one in redesigning the way we handle scales, to, have, to reach 50 hertz in a monocular setup, and then we exploit the stereo information um, to reach 135 hertz, including the stereo matching time, and still keeping the same quality. So if you review the state of the art, um, the interesting methods are roughly uh, Duvalier and Jones work, which uh, reached very high speed, but compromising on the quality. Then we have the classic HOG plus SVM, um, which has then extended to be run fast on GPUs. And then we have the classic work on power models, which has a big push on quality, um, but it's actually quite slow. Um, and an interesting work that appeared recently done by Putin Dollar uh, designed a you know, fairly different kind of detector, which actually it's a single part detector that is on par with part models. And it has a fast variant uh, called the fast detector in the West. So this is actually the detector on which this is actually a detector on which we base the work, and I'm going to briefly describe it. Um, so this detector takes an input image and then computes the classical, um, the classical um, different um, histogram of orientations and a few color channels, and then this is used, um, and then this is used to compute integral integral features. Using the integral features, we get to use the different regions, um, different regions on the image that then are fed into a simple level two decision trees and then this is boosted. So it's a simple boosted classifiers where we select different features from a feature pool and all of them together compute the score and if we plug this with a soft cascade to accelerate the computations and we put it into a GPU, we reach state of that quality but at about four hertz. So we're not there reaching the quality that we want to reach. Um, so if we look at what is the fastest detector available on GPUs is the fast sort method. And if we look at what is bounding the speed of this kind of detector, uh, we notice that actually it's spending most of its time computing the features themselves. Computing the features is the slow part, and then once you have the features, computing the scores of detection is rather fast. So if we want to reach high speeds, we have to figure out a way to compute features themselves faster. Um, so everyone is familiar with this idea, but still I will to explain it. Um, the reason why we said we spend time computing features is because we have a single template that we're going to um, slide around the image to detect the pedestrians in this case, but a single template will only detect pedestrians at a single scale. So a pedestrians at different scales, like here, won't be detected, and to work around this, what is classically done is that you resize your image, you recompute the feature, and then you run your template again. So actually, the features are computed at about you know, 50 times as many as scales that you want to detect, and this is where the time goes. This is where you're spending most of your time. So we want to remove this part. Um, ideally, one would like to just be able to compute only once and have as many, as many templates as scales. That would be a way to work around this problem. 
but no one does that in practice because training the model is expensive, it takes hours or days, and training you know, as many models as scales would be way too slow. Um, so this is the key question. How could we avoid resizing the image multiple times so we gain the speed? Um, so technically, if you compute the features at a single scale, you cannot know how will be the feature response at a different scale because that would be like knowing the spectral distribution of your image which you don't know a priori. Um, but it turns out there is a recent work from Piotr and Dollar um, in the fast detector in the west that show that even if you cannot know it exactly, in the natural world, in the natural image that, that we actually observe, you can approximate um, one uh, the features at one scale at different scales. So this is an empirical approximation, it's not theoretical, but it turns out to work quite well you know, around one octave, so between a factor two in change of scales. So he proposed that we could compute only a few times this, um, uh, the features at a different scales and then we can approximate them uh, to get all the scales and then be able to apply our template. Um, so it turns out that we can actually revert uh, this situation and in this paper we propose to transfer the computation time done at testing time to move it into training time. And that way we only train five different scales, uh, five different templates, and then we can apply them at test time computing the features only at a single scale. Um, so when we do that we're actually reducing by three the features computation time compared to the faster detector in the west. Um, and so the way it works is that we train these five templates and then we use um, this approximation in a reverse way where we can actually transform the classifiers across the scales. So we only train five models but at test this time it works literally having the 50 models loaded in memory. Uh, and if we, if we want to change the parameters at testing time we can do it with 10, with 100, whatever we want. As long as they stay in the same range that we train with these five models. Um, so because we train different models at different scales then we can better explore the information available on the image. So if we look at the lower scales model they look much coarser uh, because the pixels are bigger respect to the template but as we have uh, bigger templates then we have uh, more, fin more fine details that are extracted from the image. So we can actually better explore the information on the image through different scales. So that's why we get an improvement on the quality and at the same time we get an improvement on the speed because we're reducing the features computation significantly respect to a naive method and um, also still significantly respect to the fast detector in the west. Also in practice we avoid alternating between rescaling the image, computing the features and computing the scores which makes the computation more streamlined which is relevant in the actual implementation and when evaluating at 640 by 48, 55 scales uh, for every window inside the image we actually reach 50 hertz running on a single GPU. Um, so this is uh, the very fast detector running on a monocular setup but in our application in street scenes um, we can also use stereo information to extract geometric constraints, geometric priors of the scene that will allow to run even faster. Uh, so we want to use this scene geometry to guide the detections and to do that um, we use a model which is called the stick servor model. So this was introduced by Badino et al a few years ago and the key idea is to use an extremely simplified model of the world. We assume there is a ground plane and on top of this ground plane all the object will be sticks coming out perpendicularly from the, from the ground. So of course this model doesn't fit everything that you will see but it will fit pretty well to pedestrians, to cars, to bicycles, to most of the objects of interest. So in some area of the image it won't fit, it will be erroneous but in the object of interest we hope that it will fit well. So in Badino's proposal you take a stereo image, you compute a as high quality dev map as you can and then you estimate the stick cells on top of that. The problem is that if we want to do a dev map computation at 50 hertz that per se is really challenging and if we want to go faster it's really challenging. So in a previous work uh, presented at ECCV we show that actually you can skip the dev map computation we can directly use the stereo images to estimate the stick cells in a single step. And this can be done significantly faster than depth map computation by design because we're estimating a simpler, um, a simpler model with fewer parameters. So in simple words how this works is that we have the left and the right image and then we'll do um, um, horizontal correlation on the image to estimate a V disparity map. So for every point on this matrix on the left, 
will have correlated a row on the image on the left with the right for a given disparity and we see how well they match. So this way we get the evidence that allows us to estimate the ground plane. Um, in the current implementation we estimate a straight line but it could be also a beast plane model whatever we want. And given that we have the ground plane estimate now we do a vertical correlation to build a U disparity map. So here every pixel assumes that we have a stick server model and then we look at uh, is this vertical stick on this position uh, matching on the right image. And if they match they will have a, a, a low cost and if they don't match they will have a high cost. So then we can see that we get these uh, like black areas indicating where the objects are and then with a single dynamic programming we can obtain the boundaries in the U disparity world which then correspond to areas on the image where we expect the objects to be. And this runs at 135 uh, hertz using CPU only. Um, the reason which is so fast is because we do correlation around rows and columns and not around little blocks which is much faster on modern hardware. Um, so we evaluated this in a stereo data set. Um, in the monocular case and in data set we have high variance amongst methods. In the stereo case the ordering is roughly the same but the variance among the method is, is smaller. So we see a smaller difference. Uh, but still compared to uh, the HOG detector or very fast detector improves in quality. And then when we join this with only the ground play constraint we further improve the quality uh, and getting higher speed. And then when we couple this with the stick cell estimation we keep this improved quality but we further push up the speed. So we see that we are really getting the proper information of where the objects are so that we get faster by evaluating less on the image and better quality. Um, so as I said this uh, provides a significant speed up so without geometry on this kind of images we reach 50 hertz. Using the ground plane constraint which is estimated from the image we can reach uh, 100 hertz and then using uh, the stick cells constraint so everything together we reach 135 hertz where the CPU side is, is bounding the speed and the GPU actually runs slightly faster. We run up to 150 hertz on the GPU side so the total system side is bounded by CPU. Um, by design we are searching 45 44 times less than in the simple monocular case and this whole setup runs at about 8 years on actually this laptop, on a laptop. So this, it enables us to do embedded applications. Um, so let's look how this work uh, on a video. So we have the left and right input images from which we estimate the ground plane. So we estimate the tilt of the camera and the height. Given the ground plane we can estimate the stick cells which tell us where the objects are and then we use these to do the detection. So these are the results we get at 135 hertz. So it's not perfect but it's state of the art and definitely the best trade off between speed and quality. Yep. Right. So um what we are proposing here is a win-win situation. You get both the highest non quality for a single part detector on the indirect data set at the time of camera ready. There's a few papers this year in CVPR that are hopefully improving on that. And we reach state of the art speed in the monocular setup and in the stereo setup and also in mobile setup. And overall we reach roughly a five time uh, speed up and a roughly a three time lower uh, reduction in the miss rate compared to the previous fastest uh, mm, classical fast to the G detector. Uh, so if there's one thing that you should keep in mind from this talk is that avoiding resizing the image and coupling these with stick cells provide best uh, faster and better detections altogether. Um, so this is what we did a few months ago. So uh, interesting future works uh, in my opinion are this idea of transforming the classifier. Typically we train a classifier and say we are done but now we use it. In this work actually we train it and then we do something else afterwards. We transform it. In this case transform it across scales. And I think this idea can be used in different setups. So um, we have submitted a work where we um, transpose this idea to transform the classifier not across scales but across occlusions and then we can handle different kind of occlusions. And I think that this will be interesting to explore also if we change across different point of views. So this will be an interesting future work. Um, another idea is that actually this setup was rather crude. This, you know, we put it all together, we reached the 100 hertz we wanted to have, but there is um, um, a series of design choices that were done in a rather you know, brutal way and that can be, definitely can be refined 
and thus improve both speed and quality furthermore. And we're currently working a new version that reached about 170 hertz and yeah, work in progress. And finally, this is a single part detector. We don't have the little parts, uh, different parts as in the classical uh, fuzz swaps work. And since we reach you now higher quality, cobbling this together should push it even further. That's what we'll expect. Um, so that's what I had to talk to you. Uh, the code will be released on August 1st. Uh, so everyone can, can use this detector. And questions are most welcome. Thanks. So we have time for a couple of questions. Hi, thanks for the thanks for the talk. Um, a really quick question. So you showed a tenfold improvement on a on a GPU over your original GPU and the C and the FPTW implementation. Do you have a notion of of what the speed up on a CPU is over the original impl implementation? Um, okay. All right. So. Um, the question is basically what's, what will be the speed up on a CPU case. Um, so here the, the detector is faster by design. So, so you will definitely have the speed up on the CPU side. Um, in our case, um, the, the, f the naive implementation on GPU had roughly 50% of the time spending on computing the features and 50% of the time computing the score, like going through the soft cascades. So um, when we use the, the this trick across scales, then the features computations go from 50% to be only 5%, roughly. And then 95% of the time is spent on the scores computation growing to cascade. So if you have a CPU implementation, you can expect this ratio to be the same, but then it will depend on the exact implementation you have on CPU, you know, how, long, how long these two parts take. But that, that will be no, what, what I'm telling you. Our CPU implementation that we have as a reference, just to get an idea, is extremely slow. So we didn't do an evaluation on this particular point. Sure. Thanks. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>